Welcome to 24 Great Animated Films for Grown-Ups, Part 1. My name is Bord Edlund, and I am, among other things, an animator. But I'm an animator who dislikes 90% of all animated movies, because most animated movies are, unfortunately, made for children. And while I am, obviously, you know, incredibly youthful, and really in the earliest springtime of my life, I am not a child, and presumably neither are you. Okay, so this is not a ranking. Um, instead, I have spent an illogical amount of time putting together an advent calendar. So behind each one of these little doors lies a gem of a movie. Most of them are feature length, but there's some shorts in here as well. Let's get right into opening door number one. This film packs more weird ideas into 23 minutes than most TV shows muster in six seasons. It stars a sort of wealthy, muscular, superhero version of Karl Marx representing the East, and a sexy, empty vessel, capitalist Marilyn Monroe pastiche representing the West. And then of course there's the fish photographer who becomes witness to a crime. This film is so inventive, so constantly interesting. Check it out. Ah yes, um, this one you can actually watch this free on Vimeo. It's a 26-minute wild ride through post-industrial Europe steeped in rave culture and follows a woman who runs away with an unstable criminal weirdo. Aesthetically, it's an absolutely thrilling tour de force combination of line drawings and kind of floaty 3D camera work. This to me is what I would hope VR could be. It feels both incredibly realistic and incredibly alien. Ah yes. Um, the tagline to this film is, a boy learns to play the piano, which is a hilarious reduction of the kind of wild span of this short film. David O'Reilly works in 3D, employing an aesthetic that embraces the true nature of that medium. He doesn't try to over-render things. In fact, these are, um, he, these are like viewport renderings. It's a chaotic collage of storylines and concepts. Violent and darkly funny, it's like a video game world gone very, very wrong. And it's awesome. Okay, yes, um, Shinkai is being hailed as the successor to Miyazaki. And I, I sort of understand why, but to me these are very different filmmakers. I like the Shinkai films I've seen, but I like them despite the cheese factor he doesn't always manage to escape. And this film definitely has that overly sentimental, romantic, earnest tone. But if I turn off my cynicism for just a minute, I can get lost in it and appreciate the soft, soft touch. Okay, yeah, this is an Australian stop-motion drama based on a screenplay by the brilliant Israeli writer Edgar Carrot. It's about an unemployed guy who is trying to figure out the meaning of life, and very helpfully for him, he comes across an ad in a magazine for a book that promises to tell him the meaning of life for the low price of $9.99. We also get to know various interesting neighbors of his living in the same Sydney apartment complex. This movie has a great handmade feel and a beating heart. Okay. Bill Plimpton is sort of the contemporary granddaddy of American independent animation. And to me, this is probably his most successful feature film. The noir feel of this is lush and helps build a convincing world. The plot centers around a man who drinks and smokes and sells guns. But one day he wakes up with these two small bones on his back, which he successfully shaves off with his razor, but they keep growing back in and they become harder to get rid of and eventually they grow into big angel wings. And those angel wings basically force him to be good. A dark visual pleasure with no dialogue. So I think Victoria Vincent, best known as Vune online, might just be the most interesting animator working in America. And I could have chosen any of her short films or really her collected works. But I went with Catopolis, a rich, densely packed little movie about a cat girl steeped in a violent world of corporate televised fighting, guns and murder and cloning and exploitation. Vincent's perspectives are stretched and distorted and her worlds are always near extinction, just like ours. At the core, her characters are just trying to survive girlhood. I recommend you watch everything she's done. So this sort of looks like a beautiful, classic, animated feature film for kids, but it's more interesting than that. 
The plot is a strange concoction of Tour de France cycling and 1930s music hall singers, topped off with a French mafia kidnapping storyline. But you don't really watch this for the story. There's barely any dialogue, and it's very musical and rhythmic and visually exciting. A masterfully crafted feast for the eyes. If you're a fan of Japanese breakfast, this is the film that at least partially inspired her namesake song. Like all of Satoshi Kon's films, this is a layer cake of realities and most of all dreams. To quote Wikipedia, the story is a battle between a dream terrorist who steals a device that allows others to share their dreams and causes nightmares for people, and a research psychologist who enters the dream world and changes into Paprika, a dream detective to investigate the cases. Anyway, the parade scene in this movie is honestly just some of the most vivid cinema ever conceived. This is an incredibly strange psychological dramedy that explores something called the Frigoli delusion, a rare disorder where you believe that many different people are in fact a single person who changes appearance or is in disguise. The main character is a motivational speaker visiting a conference to promote his book, and he gets enraptured when he finally, you know, in a, a sea of sameness, comes across a woman with a unique voice and appearance. It's delightfully, disturbingly weird. I love Miyazaki's movies about as much as everyone else does, even if they do tend to be sort of children's allegories. But they treat children as actual intelligent beings, and therefore his films also speak intelligently to adults. But this film is less for children than most of Miyazaki's oeuvre. It's a more adult film about a collision of art and war, about illness and commitment and love. And I feel it's also a kind of a celebration of kindness, something the world needs so much more of. So this is a great coming-of-age story set against the backdrop of the Iranian Revolution. It's an autobiographical story based on the graphic novel of the same title. And the art direction here really makes this thing come to life beautifully. Through funny and insightful personal reportage, we learn about life in Iran, and especially life in Iran as a woman. But it's not all condemnation. This is also a portrait of a beautiful and resilient people. Alright, that takes us halfway through. Come back next week for the rest of the list. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to remedy that lapse in judgment. I post videos on all of these topics, just doing my best to confuse the YouTube algorithm. Although, if you hit the like button below this video, that, that might help it understand. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you back here next week.